Hi, everybody, and welcome inside our luxurious NJCAA studios in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm your host, Sam Hyman, as we get ready for the NJCAA Division I Women's Basketball Championship Selection Show. All games to be played in Lubbock, Texas. This is going to be a very exciting field. We've seen a lot of different champions over the last several years, five to be exact, over the last nine seasons. So it should be very exciting stuff in Lubbock, Texas. Let's take a look at how this will play out as the bracket is blank right now, but the top eight teams will get a first round bye. We'll get to those top eight teams in just a moment. There are 16 district champions who know that they're in the dance. They know that they have a chance to compete for a national championship, but there are eight at-large selections, and some of those teams are gonna be on the edge of their seat as they await their fate here today for this championship bracket. So let's begin unpacking the bracket, shall we? The number one overall seed, undefeated Three Rivers, 28-0. The Raiders from Poplar Bluff, Missouri, they are looking to win the championship as an undefeated team for the first time since 2012. We haven't seen an undefeated champion since Trinity Valley went 36-0 in 2012, led by head coach Alex Wiggs. This is a very dangerous team. The number two overall seed from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, Shelton State, the Buccaneers, the nation's best scoring defense, holding opponents to below 46 points per game. They absolutely dominated their district championship in three games, averaging, winning by an average of 45 points in those three games. Shelton State, the number two overall seed. The number three overall seed, the Lady Chargers from Georgia Highlands. Five players in double figures this season for Georgia Highlands, led by Jashanti Simmons, who's averaging just a touch under 17 points per game. And this team is rolling. Red Hot winners of 27 consecutive games. It's the Chargers, the Lady Chargers from Georgia Highlands as the number three overall seed. And the number four overall seed, Northwest Florida State. The Raiders punching their ticket. The defending national champion, Northwest Florida State Raiders, led by head coach Bart Walker, who took the squad to the championship and won it for the first time ever. Northwest Florida State, 27-2 overall. And they are the number four overall seed. The number five overall seed, the Midwest District champions, Wabash Valley Warriors. They've won 99 straight conference games. They're on a 27 game winning streak. This team is on a roll. They're the nation's highest scoring offense as you see on your screen. And they've only lost once. The Midwest District Champions, Wabash Valley Warriors from Mount Carmel, Illinois. The number six seed is Southern Idaho. The Golden Eagles. Nearly an unblemished conference record, 17 and one under head coach Randy Rogers. A perfect record at home and their 12th appearance in the NJCAA championship. Six seed, Southern Idaho. The seven seed, the Buccaneers from Blinn College from Brenham, Texas, just one hour west of Houston, led by head coach Jeff Jenkins in his 20th season. This is Blinn's first tournament appearance since 2016. And the last team to get a first round bye, the eight seed, West District Champs from Arizona Western, the Matadors. Watch out for Alliance and Diba, 11.9 rebounds per game, three blocks a game, that's seventh nationally for Ndiba. The Matadors from Arizona Western at 29 and two overall, making it for the first time since 2002. They are the number eight seed. So those are the top eight teams in the bracket on the women's side. As we take a look at the bracket right now, big picture, all of the teams in the top eight are district champions. So that means still some teams on the edge of their seat as far as the at-large selections go. The top eight teams we've unpacked here in the NJCAA Women's Basketball Championship. And now let's join the number one overall seeds head coach. It's Alex Wiggs from Three Rivers. 
undefeated 28 and 0 entering the NJCAA championship. Coach, what what a season. Tell me what's been the biggest area that you've been impressed with throughout the course of this season with your team. You know, it's definitely a great accomplishment and very proud of this group. I think the biggest thing is that it is our depth is that we've had multiple girls step up and just uh, perform uh, throughout the year. And I think that's been, that's been the most impressive thing uh, throughout the year. Alex, this is your second season as head coach of the program, sixth overall, and the school is seeking their first national championship within this program. So when did you realize that that this team this season, was there a point in time where you realized this squad has what it takes? Yeah, you know, we have we have 10 girls back from a team that made a Final Four run last year. So uh, with, with those 10 kids back and with uh, – with the return or with the newcomers that we had, it uh, it was pretty early on where we thought that we may have a chance to do something special this year. I want to touch on some of your players, uh, Mia Yelder and Autumn Dodd. They are taking the ball away from the opposition, averaging over three steals per game between the two of them. What makes those two so special on the defensive end of the floor? You know, the, they get a lot of ball pressure. Uh, they are very good at keeping the ball in front of them. Uh, they have active hands and, and just do a great job uh, of anticipating and forcing the other teams, uh, other teams' players to make mistakes. When you were told that you were going to be the head coach of this program, I mentioned this is your second season. What was going through your mind as far as the way you wanted to construct the, the squad down the road? Yeah, you know, uh, like you mentioned, been here six years and second year as the head coach, but uh, so kind of had that vision vision moving forward. And it's uh, definitely want to continue to get, get very good kids, uh, not only on the court, but in a classroom. And then kids that just knew how to win, kids that wanted to come in and compete day in, day out. And that would, would show up. And, and like I said, kind of put in the extra work to be successful. And I, we were talking a little bit a moment ago just about how you have been aware of this program for several years. You grew up just around an hour outside of uh, Poplar Bluff, Missouri. So uh, what's it like to have this job and to, to not only have it, but to have a team that's undefeated with an opportunity to become the first undefeated team to win a NJCA national championship since 2012? Yeah, you know, it's it's an hour and a half away from my hometown. It's a phenomenal school, phenomenal program. Have always heard about it and then got the amazing opportunity to come down. And it's just uh, amazing the support. I mean, being this close to home, uh, it, it's amazing how many fans and, and just how many people love this program. What was your message? What did you tell your team after – you all took care of business in the central district when you won the championship. What was your message to the squad? You know, we, we need to enjoy the moment. Uh, that's one thing that we've got to do. We've got to make sure we enjoy the moment, but also uh, it's going to make sure that we know that uh, we're not done yet. You know, we've got to make sure that we come in, come into work tomorrow and uh, get ready to compete and get ready to prepare for the national tournament. All right, that is the head coach of Three Rivers in Missouri, Alex Wiggs. Thanks so much for taking some time, Coach. Congratulations on earning and locking up the number one overall seed. You'll get a first round bye, and best of luck in the tournament in Lubbock. Thank you. Still to come on the NJCAA Division I Women's Basketball Selection Show, we unveil Seeds 9 through 24, some anxiously awaiting whether they're in or out. That's next. Over 30 majors in four divisions. Nursing. Education, criminal justice, exercise science. This is one of the very few schools to honor leadership with scholarship. Our students go out into the world with confidence. I know who I am. Pfeiffer has it all. 
The only thing that's missing is you. We welcome you back inside the NJCAA studios. I'm your host, Sam Hyman. Let's keep this train moving, shall we? We've already got the top eight teams thrown at you. We've got more to tell you about. But first, let's uh, remind you, if you're just joining us, the top eight teams in this tournament, all games to be played in Lubbock, Texas. Three Rivers, the number one overall seed, fresh off a Final Four appearance a season ago. They're looking for their first ever national championship this season. Those are all district champions, the top eight seeds. So we still got a lot left, and let's dive into the top left portion of the bracket, beginning with a 16 seed and at large selection, Chipola, the Indians. One of their signature wins this season came against the four seed in this tournament, Northwest Florida State, the defending national champions. This could potentially be an upset team, Chipola 23 and eight overall. They will take on another at-large selection, 17th seed Tyler, the Apaches. Third team from a loaded Mid-South district headed to the dance, Tyler, 23 and eight overall. The number nine seed, yet again, another at-large selection, the Jets from South Georgia Tech. Second team All-American last year, Mo Sheeta, no longer with the squad, but it doesn't face South Georgia Tech. They're back in the dance, making their sixth straight appearance and one of the best rebounding teams in the country. They will face off against the 24-seeded Monroe College Mustangs from New York, Northeast District champs. That due to participation numbers in that district, they're 14 and 14 overall, led by Olivia Medford, the team's leading scorer. Moving on to the number 13 seed, South Plains from Texas, the Lady Texans, the 13 overall seed in this tournament. Third straight appearance to the dance and a balanced scoring attack. Four players averaging 10 points or more. And they will take on the 20 seeded North Dakota SCS Wildcats. They've won 11 straight games led by Yvonne Tense, 20.9 points per game, and she leads the nation in threes per contest, more than three threes made for Ivane. The head coach is Adam Jacobson. All right, moving on to the number 12 seed, Western Nebraska, the Cougars. Their top scorer is Alicia Douglas, 18.1 points per game. This is a team that can flat out score the rock, second in the nation in points per contest, and they love to facilitate as well. A very solid offense. Who will they face? 21 seeded Murray State from Oklahoma, the Aggies. They've won 10 straight games, fourth tournament appearance all time. Look out for Elena Wilson, the team's leader in points and rebounds. 21 seeded Murray State. Switching other side of the bracket now, an at-large selection, Moberly area, the Greyhounds, the 15 seed coming out of the Central District as an at-large team. 26 and 5 overall, 16th tournament appearance, and they will take on the 18th seed of Eastern Florida State. The Titans, very excited to be in the dance as an at large selection. MJ Baker, the head coach, took over the program in 2017 and has them rolling. Poised to shock some folks here in the tournament, as you can see, an unblemished conference record of 12 and 0. Down to another at-large selection, 10-seeded New Mexico Junior College, the Thunderbirds, led by first-year head coach Austin Mefford, the 10-seed, 13-0 at home. And this is a team that can flat out stop you on the defensive end of the floor, 51.2 points per game on that average, and that is sixth in the country. And they will take on 23-seeded Jones, last year's number one overall seed, Jones, from Mississippi, the Bobcats from Ellisville, Mississippi, and they are led by Johnson. 16.8 points per game. She's very, very impressive. 
Going to the number 14 seed, Casper. The Thunderbirds from Casper, Wyoming, their third straight appearance in the NJCAA tournament, rolled through the district tournament, winning by an average of 21 points in three games. They are the Northwest Plains district champions, Casper College, the Thunderbirds. They'll take on 19-seeded Hutchinson, the Blue Dragons. Love to get to the free throw line. This team is averaging more than 16 free throws made per game. That's good for second in the nation. Hutchinson will face off against Casper, and the winner of that game plays Georgia Highlands. Moving to our final two teams, 11-seeded Trinity Valley, the Cardinals from Athens, Texas. They won NJCAA championships three years in a row from 2012 to 2014, the last team undefeated to win the national championship in 2012. They were the runner-ups a season ago. And they will take on the last team that we will unpack, Walter State, the Senators from Morristown, Tennessee, their 18th appearance all time in the tournament, led by Kiera Hill, who was named Region 7 Tournament MVP with her 13 double-doubles throughout the course of the season. Walter State rounding out the field of 24 as our bracket is now complete. Three Rivers at the top at 28 and 0. It's going to be very exciting games to be played in Lubbock, Texas, starting March 16th and rolling through to the, tw to the championship game, which will be on the 21st of March. All right, coming up next, we'll sit down with the committee chair of the Division I Women's Basketball Championship. That is Darren Pinnear. next. The landscape of sports is changing. AI is the next evolution. We're bringing it to fields and gyms everywhere with Huddle Focus. Just mount it, set it, and forget it. Multiple lenses, AI player tracking, automatic recording, or record on the fly with the Focus app. Instant uploads and flexible live streaming options. AI is changing sports. Use it to your advantage. Visit huddle.com slash focus today. And we welcome you back inside the luxurious NJCA studios in Charlotte, North Carolina. It is my pleasure to be joined by the Division I Women's Basketball Chair. It is Darren Paneer. Darren, thank you so much for taking some time out of your busy schedule. I know it's been a very hectic last several hours. It has been, but Sam, uh, greatly appreciate you folks for doing what you're getting ready to do to reveal the, you know, the 1 through 24 and the 8 at large. So. Thank you for that. Certainly, let's jump right in and start with the number one overall seed, Three Rivers, a, a team that you've been able to see a good amount because you work in the same region. What stands out about this team and how do they compare to other number one seeds in years past? Well, Sam, great question. Um, yes, I was fortunate enough to see them three times throughout the year and they are coming into the tournament undefeated and we know what's gonna start a week from Monday is a national tournament and it's called March madness the reason it's called March madness. Anything can happen when that ball gets thrown up in the air at the beginning of each game in past years, the number ones or number twos who came in undefeated. Well, unfortunately didn't make it to the championship game. Um, anything goes uh, this year is a little different than past years. As you probably know, we had some COVID relief as of the waivers and some people came back and participated. Um, this year is going to be a very interesting tournament due to the fact that some individuals could have left, but they stayed for their so-called second or third year or second year of participating instead of going on to the NCAA team. So I think the tournament, even though Three Rivers is undefeated, um, it's going to be a brutal tournament. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a I think there's going to be a lot more upsets this year than it has been in the past. That's great to hear. Very exciting stuff. And Three Rivers trying to become the first uh, undefeated champion since 2000 and 
12. Moving on, Darren, let's talk about some of the bubble teams, some of the at-large selections. What what were some of the the biggest areas of discussion between uh, certain teams as far as whether or not they get in or not uh, on the edge of their seat? I think the biggest thing the committee had to swallow was, and obviously the committee did their homework, um, was the teams who accidentally lost in a semifinal and then make it to the championship in their region slash district. And those teams um, were talked about and discussed and um, we selected eight at large. So it was, it was interesting. Um, you know, the polls come out every week and we look at that and we dive in and we dive into, you know, teams they lost to in the semifinals. And if they're a ranked team, then it gives them a little bit more weight to receive that at large bid. Yeah, it's, it's certainly going to be very interesting. Is there one team that, uh, that got in that took some debating that, that really stands out? Not one team, realistically, Sam, to be honest with you. Um, only one team, but what if it came to our minds would be Eastern Florida. But at the end of the day, um, they were in a conversation the whole time. Um, not one team didn't make the conversation that didn't make it at large. So the conversation in the top one through eight to the at large, they all made in the conversation. Yeah. And so. you mentioned, you mentioned uh, how this, this field is wide open. How would you uh, assess this, this field in terms of ones that you've seen in years past? It's going to be a fun tournament, Sam. I mean, <laughs> honestly, in the years past, um, I think we had a better grip. I, I think COVID has really um, tweaked this tournament and probably the men's tournament as well, or any division tournament in the NJCA with the extra year of participation. Um, it's it's going to be a fun tournament. And I, I, I thank their committee tremendously the amount of hours they put into before um, just an hour ago, we picked that large and we seeded the tournament. It is going to be a wild tournament. It's going to be a fun tournament. I think it's anybody's game, to be honest with you. Anybody's championship, personally. I know Three Rivers undefeated, and they're number one. I know Shelton has a very, very, very good squad, and they're number two. It's going to be a roller coaster tournament. You better tie your shoelaces tight. You better tie them tight. <laughs> certainly, certainly. All right, well, that is the Division One Women's Committee Chair, Darren Paneer. Darren, thanks so much for your time, and enjoy the tournament. Enjoy the madness. Thanks. Well, thank you, and thank you for doing what you're doing for us. I appreciate it. So once again, a quick glance at the 24-team field in the Division I Women's Basketball Championship. All games to be played in Lubbock, Texas. Texas should be very exciting for the number one overall seed being Three Rivers. We've seen five different champions over the last nine seasons. So very exciting stuff for you. Again, all games to be played starting March 16th. All right, that does it for us here from the headquarters in Charlotte, North Carolina. Thanks so much for watching the NJCAA Division I Women's Basketball Selection Show. Have a good night and enjoy the dance.